Hey guys, this is Barbus of Barbus Gaming. Thank you so much for watching. Today I've got a pretty big video. In my eyes, it's pretty big since I use Shotcut a lot. Um, Shotcut has come out with a new update that has added uh, some nice features that people have been wanting for a while. So this version of Shotcut is 18.05.08. Uh, the biggest thing that has been added to th with this update is the use of keyframes. Yay! Now, not every single filter is supported by keyframes. Um, basically, if you don't know what a keyframe is, it's basically like a way to further edit your filters. Now, they are just starting out with this, and it even says here that keep in mind this is new, incomplete, and a little unstable. So, tells you what all there's, what all is not supported. If you want to look at the full change log, you can take a look at it on the Shotcut website, shotcut.org. Um, the filters that are supported for keyframes at this time are gain and the gain volume. Um, so, gain slash volume filter, the brightness filter, the circular frame filter, the color grading filter opacity filter, and the size and position filter. Now, if you notice in size and position, it's a simple only, no curve UI. So what Shotcut has done is they've created a simple uh, keyframe UI, and they also have an advanced keyframe UI. I will show you both. Um, we're mostly going to be working with, so with size and position um, due to the fact that now that we can do keyframes of size and position, this now allows for things like dynamic zooming on video, which I know a lot of you have been looking forward to. That Because dynamic zoom is something you only normally get in one of your uh, more premium video editing software. So now that Shotcut has that, let's show you how to use it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be taking a look at the dynamic zoom. All right, so I've got a clip of Ring of Elysium loaded on here. So I want dynamic zoom on obviously something that's notable. So I had a kill here somewhere. Where was it? It's almost here. Here it was. All right, so we're going to choose here. Alrighty, so in order to correctly use the dynamic zoom on this, you will still need to split the playhead of whatever you're wanting to focus on. So we're going to split the playhead there, which by pressing the S key, that'll split up the video. And we want to split it there. All right, now your focus is going to be here. Okay, so my set, mine's already set up, but I will undo this just for the sake of showing y'all. Okay. And we will exit out. All right, so your UI is going to look like normal. In the keyframes, they've added a UI button up in the toolbar up at the top for keyframes, as you can see right here. You're going to want to click on keyframes. Uh, by default, it's going to use or it's going to pop open this box on the right hand side on the bottom. This is your workspace for your keyframes. That's not big enough for me, or it's not. I don't know, it just looks kind of weird. So what you can do is you can drag this out, and you can either put it on the left side. At the top, I don't know what that even looks like because I'd never messed with it. Um, what I figured out to do is just drop it in here, and that will then create a tab down here at the bottom for keyframes and then for timeline. <clears throat> All right, so the way to get the keyframes to show up is you're going to take your section of video and you're going to add a filter. So, to do dynamic zoom, we're going to be adding the size and position filter. 
All right, so we have now added the size and position filter. Now we're gonna go over to our keyframes tab. And as you can see, the clip popped up now. Um, what we're going to do to do your dynamic zoom is you're going to drag picture away a little bit and you're gonna zoom in, zoom in more. And you can obviously make the picture bigger by the size properties over here by just changing the size there. I want to keep my focus on the center of the video. All right, so now without touching this, we're going to go back to the timeline. We're going to go back to the section of video. Now without touching this, and if you play the clip, how I have it there, it immediately just snapped into the zoom. There was nothing dynamic about it. It was just very blah. Another new thing that ShotCut added is if you see, if you look in the top left right here and the top right, you see these circles. These are now your, like, I guess you call them drag handles or just buttons or whatever you want to call them. Uh, this is to mess with any of the effects that you currently, that your filter is currently using. So, but you have to be in the keyframes tab to be able to do this correctly because if you try to do this in the ta in the timeline, but you can, they're there in the timeline, it's going to add every single effect possible that would use this, um, use this adjuster. So we only want to use size and position. So we're going to go to the keyframes tab under size and position, and you're going to click and drag. As you can see that the, the shadow effect that it puts out kind of reminds me of the, like fade in, fade out. That's exactly what it's doing. So basically if we make these a similar time, what was this one? All right. So those are basically the same time. So that's pretty much even. Now, this basically tells this effect like, okay, hey, you need to, you don't need to start until then, but you need to gradually start taking effect. And then you're gonna stay, and this whole flat area here between the two dots is where the effect stays the entire time, and then on its way out, it fades out, basically. That's what this line means. So now when you go back to your timeline, and you watch this section of video, Now it gradually zooms in. We take her business and then it gradually zooms out. There's your dynamic zoom folks. There is your dynamic zoom. Um, pretty, pretty nice that they added this. Um, I was very appreciative. I think it works, works excellent. I don't think it's too hard. Um, I think if you didn't understand it the first time, Go back and just watch this again and again <laughs> um it took me a minute to figure it out but once i got it figured out the biggest thing is be sure any adjustments that you make to your filter are inside the keyframe inside the keyframe tab because if you do it in the timeline it's going to mess it all up and it's not going to look pretty it's going to look ugly so this here where you drag where you drug the the handles here that was an example of the basic UI or the simple uh, keyframe UI. To be able to show you the advanced UI, uh, what I will have to do is I have to go back to the timeline. We'll pick a different section of video. We're going to pick right here, looking into the sun right here. All right, so to show this the easiest way possible, um, we're going to add a filter and the brightness filter is one filter that is supported. So we're going to click on brightness and then from there, if you go to keyframes, you'll see that, oh, what did it do? Oh, cause I still have a moment though. There we go. Okay. All fixed. All better. Sorry about that. All right. So we're going to add the brightness filter. And since we added that brightness filter, um, that actually added it to this entire clip here. Um, 
you can do that if you don't feel like it's just easier for me to break stuff up like this because it just looks easier. Um, but for the sake of saving time, we're just going to do it like this. So now if you go to your keyframes, it's going to have that entire clip that you have up until my, my split. It has that entire clip shown here and it's all broken up and nice and separated because this has a filter added to it. So it separated the timeline and brought it into the keyframes tab. All right. So what you want to do, so you're going to find this little stopwatch here. You're going to say, use keyframes for this parameter. You click that. Once you do that, you see that it added like almost another track down below the video itself. This is your levels. So this is how you work this. All right, so say we wanted to start off and we wanted to make this really bright. So we're going to go really bright. As you can see, it's as I'm going up, it's adjusting the levels up. It's okay. So there's your little adjustment there. We're going to call it, you can manually do this too. You, we'll just kind of call it 880% just for the sake of staying even. So say you wanted it 180% and you wanted it to last for until you got into the house here, so where the shadows could darken. Then if you go to change that again, if you want to change that back down to 100, as you can see here, it'll make another, another uh, parameter. So what happens now is there is an effect here. You see how it's slowly... Okay, so it's bright up until it starts getting slowly less bright. All right, so the way to remedy that is you just go to you go to somewhere close by on the timeline of where you want it to stay bright up until a certain time, and then you're gonna we're gonna make it 180 percent. And then once you go in the house, that's when you want it to drop off. So you each parameter has its own level. So if you don't have a like a middle like a midway parameter. It's just going to slowly, it's just going to gradually just drop off like you saw there before. Now with that parameter added, now your brightness stays up until you tell it, okay, hey, it's time to, it's time to darken. Um, so that is your advanced UI. And that's a cool feature. I really, really like that. I don't know what all they're going to what other filters are going to add that's going to use the keyframes like this, but I really do like this. Um, I think it's going to put Shotcut back on the market as far as, you know, being a competitor because that's one thing that Shotcut did not have. You know, I had a ton of questions asking me about uh, keyframes and asking me about dynamic zoom. And you can do the same thing on a picture, um, which will be a separate video I will show later on. Um, but I just mainly wanted to get across the dynamic zoom and a couple of the, the, and the couple different UIs, the simple and the advanced UI for the keyframes. So if you did not understand this, or if you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, please click that like button. Give me that big old thumbs up. If you enjoy the content of my channel, please do not forget to click that subscribe button. And if you wish to be notified when I drop new videos, just click the bell next to the subscribe button and you will be notified. All right, guys, until my next shotcut tutorial, this is Barbaros with Barbaros Gaming, and y'all have a good night.